All right, guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to implement speech to text in our project. Cool, isn't it? All right, so the first thing we want to do is open the Oculus folder, voice, demo, scenes, built in demo. All right, so this is the built in demo that is given to us with the Oculus SDK. Let's hit play directly and try and play with it a little bit. So right here, you've got an activate button that you can press, or you can also press the space bar to start recording. So let me start recording something here. Set a timer for 10 minutes. All right. So I've recorded my audio and it has been transcripted right here. Okay. So it's already pretty much working. Like half of the job is already done. Let's try another sentence. From now on, you are a Unity expert and you need to advise me on making a hyper-casual game. Nice! The transcription is perfect, actually. All right, so now we are going to grab what we need from this scene and drop it onto our scene, okay? So for that, I'm going to go to my Scenes folder right here, grab the scene and drop it here. Perfect. Then you want to grab the app voice experience, or maybe duplicate it, grab it and drop it onto your main scene. Awesome. And I think that this is the only thing that we need. Okay, perfect. We will add the text area and so on later on. Okay, so we can now unload our built-in demo. Perfect. Let's rename the app voice experience to something like STT. Okay, so this is the speech to text. Let's call it speech to text management. Something like that, management. Perfect. We can also drop them onto their own parent. Okay, like so. Nice, so that it's better organized. Now we can remove the response handlers because the response handlers are used when you add intents to your WIT website. Like for instance, if you want to change the color of an object, you would be able to call object like change the color of that cube to red and it would actually change its color to red inside of your game so it would allow you to make games where players can control elements with their voices we might make a course about that later on but yeah for now let's go back to what we are dealing with so let's remove the response handlers perfect then i'm going to create a new game object that will have almost the same logic as the interaction interaction handler right here. Okay, let's also remove the button event watcher script. Perfect. Now I'm going to open my scripts folder. So chat GPD right here, scripts. Okay, and let's create a new script. So let's call it STT bridge. Okay, let's open the STT bridge along with the interaction handler. Cool. I'm going to grab all of the logic from the interaction handler right here. So let's grab this. Okay, go down till here, I guess. Open the STT bridge and drop all of the logic in here. We need to add the library from for the WIT response node. Okay, along with the one for the WIT request. Nice. App voice experience too. Okay, Oculus voice, text. Okay, so we aren't going to use a text. So we will change that. Okay, so we don't need the fresh state text. So let's remove it. Perfect. We also don't need the Boolean for showing the JSON. All right, is active. Let's also remove this line from here. Okay, so we can actually remove this line. And this should not be called. Nice. Also, let's remove this. This. Perfect. So when we are forced to stop listening to the recording, in here we reset the text area.txt. So we are already resetting it from our discussion manager. So this is going to be our input field. Okay. So let's simply call the on request complete. In here we are not showing the JSON, so let's remove these brackets, these curly brackets. Cool. We can also remove these lines for the same reason that we've specified here. Okay. And in here, I heard we don't want 
to write I heard, only show the response. Nice, on request error. Uh, we are gonna remove these two, okay. Nice, just to show the error in our input field, if there is any. You can decide to remove this line too if you don't wanna show the error to the user. Or maybe you can write something else. Um, what else? Okay, so we are pretty much done in here. So let's now add a reference to our input field, okay? So let's add the TM Pro library. So using Text Mesh Pro, perfect. We want to replace the text area by input field from the Text Mesh Pro library. Let's rename this um, prompt input field. Awesome. And by the way, I don't know if I already told you that, but you can rename multiple instances of the same variable by hitting Control R twice, like so. Prompt input field. Okay, cool. So it has changed all of the in instances of this variable. Nice. So we don't want to show the listening text in here, nor the processing one. Okay, so on request transcript. We want to show the transcript. So this is our response here. Perfect. We should be good here. So now let's try and add a callback to our ask button so that we can use it to record. Okay. So let's remove the interaction handler from here. Okay, I'm going to add the, TT, the STT bridge instead. So let's rename this to STT bridge, like so. Perfect. We are going to drop in the app voice experience in here, along with the input field that we've got right here. Awesome. Now let's select the ask button and remove the callback of the onClick event because instead we are going to use an event trigger. So let's add event trigger, an event trigger component and let's add two new event types, one for the pointer down and one for the pointer up. And both of these are going to enable or disable listening to what the player is recording, okay? So in here we want to drag the bridge, so the STT bridge, speech to text, and select set activation to true whenever we press the button down and set it to false whenever we release, so on pointer up. Now let's quickly give it a try. So hit play. Okay, I'm going to try and press the ask button, just record stuff. Hello, I'm just trying to record something in here. Let's release. Awesome. So the message has been recorded, but now we can't send it, okay? So whenever we record again, it's overriding what you've recorded before, okay? Perfect, that, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so now we need to add a way to send the message, right? Because the recording works properly, but we need to send it. So, so there are two ways of doing so. The, the first one is gonna be to send it directly from the bridge, okay? So whenever the message has been recorded, you can send it automatically. But if you do that, you won't be able to write your prompt like with your keyboard or your mobile keyboard, okay? Whenever you write it and you try and send it, you are gonna, tr you are gonna record and override what you've written. So instead, in the next lesson, we are gonna learn how to add multiple functionalities to the Ask button. So stay tuned and learn more in the next lesson.